Welcome back. Let's take you back to that developing story coming out of Iran. And Iran has launched dozens of drones against Israel. The attack may trigger a major escalation between the regional arch enemies, uh, with the U.S. pledging to back Israel. Two security sources in Iraq have said dozens of drones had been spotted flying from Iran towards Israel over Iraqi airspace in what Ir Iranian uh, press TV called extensive drone strikes by a revolutionary guard. For an update, uh, we're now joined by SABC News International Editor Sophie Mukwen, and she joins us via telephone line. Sophie, earlier on we spoke to you and uh, you told us about the 50 drones uh, that were launched uh, by Iran into Israel. Uh, what's the latest now coming out uh, from Iran? The latest is that uh, it is now 100 drones, but also the cruise missiles which are faster than the drones and therefore we expect uh, uh, the missiles to reach the territory of uh, israel uh, soon but also we are told that uh, uh, jordan has closed its airspace and has also indicated that it will intercept the drones uh, in their airspace iraq has also closed its airspace and also these two countries, Israel and, uh, and, and, and Iran, they have also closed their airspace. But we know that uh, as we speak, the drones have been uh, released to Israel and also that will include the cruise missiles which are more dangerous. Mm. And Sophie, what sort of chaos has this uh, created in the Middle East? I mean, you speak about Jordan. Uh, I also saw reports coming out that Jordan has also declared a state of emergency. Also looking at visuals uh, coming out on social media, many people there also being stranded at an airport. Yes, because countries have closed airspace. You can't have planes leaving uh, Jordan. The same is happening in Israel when you look at the airport. The airport is deserted. And also in some uh, countries, you find people who are now stranded at the airport. But with Israel, because there was a warning earlier on, the, the airport is now deserted. And therefore, uh, this speaks to the tension and the fact that uh, Countries are taking precautionary measures in terms of ensuring that uh, there are no people coming in or leaving their respective countries. Mm. And have we seen any responses uh, there, Sophie, by the Iranian government or be it uh, the Israeli uh, government uh, in terms of what is taking place in the Middle East? They've just issued a statement, also visuals of leaders of uh, Iran, saying that uh, this is in response to what Israel did a few days ago. We also see the Hezbollah group in Iraq now also launching missiles towards uh, Israel. And therefore, as I pointed out earlier on, and I predicted that you'll have these different uh, uh, countries where you have groups that uh, are aggrieved because of Israel doing the same and it is now happening and it is now actually making that reason to be even more tense because it's not israel and uh, iran only who are fighting now or who have uh, released these uh, military capabilities you have other countries doing the same the same with uh, the capability of defense many countries in the region now have decided uh, to put their defense system, uh, people who operate the defense system, they've requested that they must be on high alert. The same with Israel. And Israel is now waiting for those drones to reach their territory to try and intercept them. America is expected to do the same using uh, the the using Jordan as a base to intercept the, the the missiles but it looks like they are using a different uh, route for example they've been launched from yemen and they are also using iraq because they knew that countries such as uh, 
uh, your, your your Jordan countries such as uh, uh, they are going to be sympathetic or they will intercept those drones. Mm. And Sophie, I mean, you speak about uh, the U.S. government and uh, we know that there is also that support from uh, the U.S. government uh, for Israel. Uh, do we know, perhaps, uh, have we been getting any indication in terms of when the U.S. president will be addressing, um, uh, you know, uh, 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 th that country? There are conflicting reports. Others are saying he is not going to address the nation. Others are saying that uh, he might address the nation as soon as he has had that meeting with the security advisors. But also he is expected to speak to some world leaders in that region, including Iran and also Israel. I think he is going to speak to Iraq as well because the president of Iraq was expected to go to e to Washington next week to speak to Benjamin, to speak to the president of America in relation to the withdrawal of the U.S. troops in Iraq, and therefore I think uh, he is going to make few calls in the region, maybe even including outside the region. For example, the allies of the United States of America and Israel in Europe. He might also speak to uh, a country such as Egypt that is very strategic in terms of uh, negotiating with these uh, countries that are in the Middle East as part of the Arab League. And therefore, I think he is going to also uh, ensure that he does speak to Saudi Arabia because Saudi can also be in the position to intercept uh, these drones or the, missi the missiles. And therefore... He is going to speak to a number of people. We'll see whether he will definitely uh, brief the media or issue a statement or make a public statement because now this is a serious matter for the world. I think even supply chain is going to be affected around the world. The oil price mm -hmm. is going to go up and therefore it is a huge, huge problem for the world in general. Mm. And looking at some of the countries in the Middle East who are also allies of uh, Iran, Sophie, do we know uh, which uh, countries at the moment are in support of uh, Iran? We know that you have groups in different parts of uh, Middle East. In Yemen, they are going to support uh, uh, Iran. You also have uh, in Iraq those groups, the Hezbollah groups, who have also launched attacks on Israel uh, as part of uh, supporting Iran. You have a country such as the, uh, Syria, you have uh, also Russia with its capability because I I Iran has been exchanging military capability with, uh, with Russia. And therefore, we may see a very serious standoff in the Middle East, but uh, the hope that perhaps with this action, Israel as well will reduce its bombardment on Gaza. And this might actually lead to ceasefire in the Middle East, as Israel is now focusing on its enemies, only those in Palestine, but in other countries as well. Because right now the security of Israel is threatened. And as I pointed out, it comes at a time where thousands of Israelis took to the streets today in Tel Aviv calling for the resignation of uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. But Benjamin Netanyahu is going to use this latest development, uh, pointing out that uh, I must continue and ensure that uh, Israel is safe. He might use this tension uh, to stay in power or to, to convince his detractors in Israel who are saying uh, he must leave office. But you also have people who are saying it's even more urgent for him to leave office as this tension is escalating.
All right, Sophie, thank you so much uh, for that update. That is uh, SABC News International uh, editor Sophie Mukwena giving us an update saying, of course, those drones have moved from 50 to 100, of course, as well as missiles uh, being launched uh, by Iran to Israel. And uh, she will continue to give us updates uh, in terms of uh, the situation in the Middle East. Really, tensions are quite high uh, tonight. And uh, we understand that uh, those drones that were launched earlier on are expected to only land in the next couple of hours.